Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Gym Riot Live podcast. I am your host, Marcus Gerzy, and this week we are going to be walking you through how and why you should be putting out a top-notch newsletter for your members. This is a tool you can use as a gym owner or gym manager uh, to provide a lot of additional value and character to your gym. So this isn't just something you kind of want to check the box on. This is actually an opportunity for you to really build a lot of value and build on the perceived value as a gym owner. So um, I'm going to break down for you today um, some tips on for do's and don't do's, uh, but also I'm going to walk you through different sections um, and suggested sections and kind of how to start. So uh, looking forward to sharing with you. So first and foremost, as always, like I said, or like I start every show, why should a gym owner care about this? Well, for one, it's not just about keeping members informed. It is about, you know, believe it or not, not everyone is on social media. So relying on, hey, I put up a social post. You didn't hear about the party or, you know, know about this thing that we've changed or the new schedule. Make sure that you're not just relying on social media. There's some oftentimes people that are in your ecosystem who are maybe not on social or you know, whatever reason, Uh, we want to make sure we are always addressing things on multiple mediums. And this is a kind of go to email is a a very reliable place that you can really hit everybody on. Uh, Because what you want to do is you want to post this on, uh, you want to send out the newsletter and then post on social, hey, newsletters out, check it out, that kind of a thing. So anyway, uh, next thing, like I said, is building that perceived value. It adds to the professionalism of the business and um, also allows you to highlight and often remind people of things of value that you did or are doing for the gym. Uh, if you've watched the episode about the uh, Gym Right Perceived Value Builder System, uh, it's a method that we use to like systematically build on the perceived value for your members. Check out the episode, it's in here in the network um, if you wanna go back and take a look. Uh, but this is a great way to not just talk about, hey, next month we've got the uh, Double Under Workshop uh, coming up with Coach Cameron, be sure to register now, uh, but also to highlight what happened previously to remind people, hey, even if this wasn't something that they attended, check out how awesome it was and to get those additional likes, comments, and social activity by linking back to it, but we'll get into that. So anyway, uh, first and foremost, uh, let's talk about the contents. So, um, for one, we want to brand our newsletter. This isn't just something you want to call, you know, the newsletter. Give it a name and a tagline. So something like what we used was the active newsletter, your source for everything awesome. So kind of makes it something fun right out of the gate that if you're, you know, sending through Infusionsoft or you're sending through MailChimp, whatever tool you're using, plenty of different newsletter tools that are available to you. Uh, we want to put in the, uh, the, the from or the subject line you know, the, the active newsletter and then whatever the subject is for either the month or even better, if you're into writing good subject lines, which go a really long way, actually giving some sort of a teaser as to one of the key things that are going to be inside that newsletter. Uh, two, styling your newsletter. Put the time and energy into each section. I like to think of each section as kind of its own individual marketing piece that needs to be able to stand alone. So making sure it has a really enticing visual, something that you put some energy into, whether you have someone that you have designed these things for you, uh, but make sure you're using good images, high quality, put a little treatment on them, put text over images, show that some energy went into this thing. Like this is a product that you're delivering, not just something I slapped together and hey, I need a picture for this and you use some crummy picture off of your phone really put a little bit of energy into this thing to make sure it looks professional. This is, like I said, a great way for you to add to the professionalism of your gym. Um, Let me see here. Next, um, when you're looking at the format of your, of this thing and how you want to kind of like open it, this is just like any sort of newsletter or email communication you want to send out. You want to get their attention right away. So, important that especially at the top, you put a lot of energy into kind of what you can call your header image or your kind of main staple image that sits at the top where, for example, it says, you know, you've got a nice image and it'll say like June um, and June newsletter or whatever. And you have a graphic that is branded, that stands alone, that really, again, makes the newsletter almost feel like a product and that this month is a special edition of that product. So that again, you get people to, when they first open it, that they're like, wow, this thing looks really good and then allows you to lead into what's below. Uh, Next step, oh, and by the way, and if you're using any sort of, uh, if you're ever linking to or highlighting a video in your newsletter, always use a screen grab. 
Don't just put a link that's, uh, you know, some text that's hyperlinked out to a, a video. Make sure that you're actually taking a high quality picture of the video, even if you're screenshotting something and then running it through Photoshop or through whatever you're using Canva to, you know, add a little player button and a little graphic. Make it look like an actual part of the, the video that you're trying to share with the play button on it. The likelihood that people will click through it is infinitely higher than it is just a link. Hey, check out the video here. Okay. So let's talk about the sections below this intro. So there's going to be a lot of different ideas you can put into this thing. Um, but for one, I always like to start with a table of contents or an index right at the top that just bullets out what they can expect. So if it's more than one or maybe two sections at the top, I would already start with section one, section two, section three, and just, you know, in this newsletter, and then you'll, you'll number them out so that people can see right away what all is in here. Um, and now when we're talking about this index, it's important also, and, and the contents below, it's important to always order things by order of importance. So put the thing that you want people to see most at the top. And remember the purpose of this newsletter, although we, it's, this is a great tool for helping you sell, whether it's products or to remind people of referral programs, we'll get into that more in a minute, but more importantly, this is not a, it should never feel salesy. So if you are trying to promote some sort of thing that is going to turn into a transaction for you as a business owner, do not put that at the top. Put that maybe as a second or third thing down, even if it is a top priority, so that we're always leading with value and something that they care about more than you necessarily getting the sale. Okay. It's about building trust with this thing. We don't want them to think every time they open it, you're trying to sell them something. Okay. Not the point of this newsletter. Um, there are other kinds of newsletters that that can apply to, but that's not what we're talking about today. Um, Next, we're going to talk about upcoming events. So upcoming events uh, or gym events. Um, this is a great way for you to talk about not just what's coming up next month. So a great way to kind of time these things is at the beginning of the month or just before the month ends and we're going into the next month's newsletter. But time it consistently with that so that people can see what's coming up a month in advance. And that way, you are, people can see well in advance of the things that are coming up. You can link people to registration pages to register for an upcoming event or to at least know about what's going on. Um, and in that same section, you want to talk about previous events. So you can talk about, you know, highlights from last highlights from, you know, April. And then this is May. You can, you can lay everything out because if, especially if you're using something like the Gym Right Perceived Value Builder System, we want to remind them of the things that just happened and how awesome they were with like a picture collage, of bowling night, or of the, the double under workshop that you hosted and put some pictures and don't just show what it was. If you're following the Gym Right Perceived Value Builder System, you're making sure to document while you're doing the event and then posting all those pictures to a, a gallery or whatnot um, the following day after the event, tagging everybody in it, commenting on it. Um, to make sure you you continue to build on the excitement of the event that just happened, this is a great opportunity in that newsletter to link back to that gallery. So when it's when you're saying like, "Hey, thanks everybody for joining Bowling Night last week. It was it was a blast. Uh, click here to check out the uh, you know the pictures or the videos of you know Coach Marcus making a mess of himself bowling left handed. Whatever, make it something to link out so that you'll get some additional activity and traffic back to it, which for your social activity is always a bonus. Uh, next one. Like I said, uh, gym news, and this isn't about events as much as this is about schedule changes, new class times, new programs, um, uh, summer, winter schedule, that kind of a thing. You want to put here, this is always really important. You want to lead with this. It's going to be more towards the top. Um, that said, side note, save programs going away for a separate email. So what I mean by that is, for example, if you're killing a program and you know that's not going to be received great, uh, I would send that as an isolated message and not bury it in this thing. Um, I would try to always keep the tone of these things as positive as we can. Okay. Again, you want this to be something that they look forward to. Uh, next section you can have is a featured athlete. If you are not doing featured athletes at your gym, I am so sorry. <laughs> Get it together. This is one of the very best ways for you to generate social activity, highlight members, make people feel important, build ambassadors within your gym. Do not miss this opportunity. Uh, we should probably do an episode just on that and how to do that well and different variations of that. So I'll be sure to do that um, here in the near future. Um, however, 
This is the best way I've seen in, uh, to announce it. So people would really look forward to the newsletter hitting their inbox because they also knew, aside from it being fun and well put together, that this is where the featured member would be announced. And putting obviously a lot of time and energy into building a great write-up or even a video of your featured member is the way to do it. And in this, you're going to link them back to the blog post on your website that has the video and has, you know, the, the embedded YouTube video, if you did a video or the video, uh, excuse me, the, the images and the write-up that is your uh, featured member. And again, this is how you want to announce it. And then you can say, uh, again, a few days later, hey, again, congrats. You want to do a social post about it. It links back to the page, gets a lot of traffic, and you have uh, your members and the person obviously who was highlighted also then driving traffic back to the website. So um, next one. Featured blog post. If you put, if you're regularly putting out content, um, this isn't where you want to put everyone or just say, "Hey, check out this month's blog." As much as you want to feature a blog post and then click back to the blog, you can go directly to the article, of course. But sometimes it's not a bad tactic to just link them back to the blog role in general. If you do have a catch-all, so they can also see some of the other blogs they may have missed. Uh, next one, new staff. Uh, excuse me, uh, new members. So. Getting a collage of headshots that you're hopefully taking when people first join and mashing it up and saying, Hey, welcome to all of our new active members. We've got, you know, from left to right, it's, you know, Susie, it's so and so and putting some energy into making them feel important and making kind of putting them up on stage and giving them a really warm welcome in front of everybody goes a really long way too. And again, this is something that then later on or a week later, you can post up again and in on your social tag everybody in it. And it's a shout out from that as well. So you can, you can use these graphics again later on in social media and so on. Uh, next, um, we've got new staff. So if you ever have new staff members or people get promotions, highlight your staff, make them look like celebrities to your members. So make sure you're showing your members that they are, they are a priority to you and that you are celebrating wins for them as well and that you want to share that publicly. Again, you can, you should be doing this on social as well, but this is a great place to highlight new people or promotions for existing uh, staff members. Charity. If you're doing any sort of charity event, uh, don't just bury it in the event section itself. Give it its own section. For example, people host sweat angels at their gym, or if you're doing your own variation of something like that, where you've got like a monthly charity that you're donating to. Uh, again, this is an episode we'll be doing in the near future, but um, this is something that should have its own section. Um, uh, social comments of the month. This is a fun one where it will, it, it will start to garner, um, more and more activity around your posts. If when people are posting funny things and you're posting, if you know, if you post something where it's like, Hey, put your funniest comment or your least favorite workout movement, whatever it may be. If you have good social activity, this is a great one to pull in. Maybe you're the, the, the voted winner uh, of this month's, uh, you know, comment of the month or something like that. It, just so that you can encourage people's engagement on social media. Um, if you're going to do something salesy, make sure you pick one thing. So if you're going to promote an upsell service, let's say, you know, hey, uh, schedule a free performance consultation uh, to check out our individualized training options. One thing, referral program, uh, free Saturday class or bring a friend. These are all salesy things. Pick one to promote every month. Don't make half of your newsletter sales, 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 sales. This is not, again, the place for that. Not that this will kill it, but in my experience, I would like to ro I rotate through what the difference, the different things that I'm trying to promote are. So whether this month I'm going to say, let's really feature the referral program and do a little section on it. And if it's the upsell, I'm going to do a section on it. And you can do this in a way to where you can reference an article you wrote or something a little bit more interesting than just refer a friend and putting a, a, a little graphic or something in there. That works, but this allows you to give it a little bit more oomph, which is likely going to lead to better conversions. Uh, next, something unique, something fun, something that builds the personality of your gym. So if you do like a weekly, uh, like a Facebook live every week, uh, you know, where it's you and the coaches are rapping about something, or you have a podcast that you do at your gym or, you know, Marx's tip of the week or something like that, put that in here as well. This is a great way, again, kind of like the social comment is to just make this fun, get engagement around something else that's there. Uh, where you can link back to a social media post or something like that. And then we have obviously exercise tips and featured recipes and other like that you can share in here as well. Um, 
Last, at the very bottom, we want to put our follow us on social and any kind of prevalent links around channels that you want to promote. Uh, again, you can kind of feature one if you like, or you can just use the standard footer of the uh, newsletter template that you're using. They all have something like that. So those are the various sections. Um, if you're watching this and you have a really cool section that gets great feedback in your community, please be sure to share it in the comments below. And uh, that way we can all learn from this and, and share some great ideas with one another. And by the way, if you're watching this live, be sure to start posting questions or anything that you have below in the comments. And that way I can address them as we're approaching the end of this thing. Uh, next part of this I want to address is frequency. How often should you be sending your newsletter? Well, a lot of people will say, you know, the more the better, you know, are you doing weekly or are you bi-weekly or is it monthly? Here's how I look at it. Start sparse. So maybe start with once a month, like your monthly newsletter and build up from there. If you feel like you need to, or if you have the content to do so, don't start with more than you can handle. And that way you can always add more based on feedback that you're getting, right? So if your newsletter goes out and people go bananas over this thing, you, you may just leave it as is and just keep making it better. Or you may say, Hey, we've got so much content or we've got so much going on. We can switch to bi-weekly or going to like weekly updates or something like that as well. But if you are someone who is, uh, who struggles with staying consistent with content or, uh, you know, maybe you're not even doing a newsletter yet and you're just thinking about starting, start small, make it really good and build up from there. Okay. And on that note too, when it comes to like starting a newsletter, if you're not doing this yet, pick only one or two manageable, but high value, like maybe your featured member or gym news as your subjects to start, because oftentimes I'll hear, Hey, I know it's really valuable. I know I should be doing it, but it's just so much work. Yeah, it does take work. And if you're doing a great newsletter, that's got a lot of good content in it, it should probably take you a full day of focused energy to put it out every month. The good news is it is totally worth it for you to do so because this is your main communication of what's happened and what's going on now and what's coming up in your gym. Um, and again, it builds on the professionalism, the value and so on, all that, but start small. Don't bite off more than you can chew and then stop sending the letter instead make it consistent. Like we're always going to start with some basic gym news. Here's what's going on. Maybe add featured events, things like that. And a featured member, and you're already going to be doing better than most. Just make the sections really good. Start small, build from there, just like you do with the frequency. Um, other than that, uh, when it comes to the, the various sections, uh, pro tip, make sure you have a nice looking CTA. Don't just do a hyperlink if you can avoid it. Um, things like MailChimp and Infusionsoft have really easy ways for you to create good looking buttons where you can use text or you can link images, uh, link out, uh, using a nice looking CTA. Don't just rely on the images or excuse me, rely on the text. And finally outsource this to someone who will do the best job. If it's not you, if you're not the person who's excited about creating a newsletter and can do it consistently, hire it out whether it's one of your staff members, or this is someone who at your gym is maybe a journalist or does this kind of content that is, you can do so. That's what we did. Uh, I used to do it myself. And then I started using my team and eventually my general manager. She was really excited about creating this content. She was, she had her pulse on the gym uh, more than most. And so she started creating this and would basically interview the various parties to make, make sure to do that. And yes, Mariano, thanks for sharing. Excuse me, CTA means call to action. All right, so uh, I'm going to share with you guys uh, an old newsletter uh, from one that I did a couple years ago for my gym, Active, uh, that you guys can check out just as an example for some of the graphics and kind of the aesthetic. Um, there are many sections we added after the fact, but I thought this one was a, a nice looking example. I'll share it in the comments here below. Um, and if you guys don't have any questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap for the day. Uh, but make sure, like I said, if you do have questions or suggestions for cool sections to include in a newsletter, or you want to share your newsletter, please do so by linking here in the comments below. It will be greatly appreciated by everyone in the network. And, uh, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you again next week, same place, same time, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.